He's sold over 3 million albums, and he's been called the international ambassador of messianic worship. The incredible Paul Wilbur takes to the stage for a praise-filled performance and shares his amazing story just ahead on Jewish Voice. Jordan, welcome to Jewish Voice, proclaiming Jesus as Messiah to the world and helping you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith and world events surrounding Israel. Our guest today has a music ministry that spans the globe from America to South America to Asia to Israel and all points in between. Thousands flock to hear his messianic inspired worship. His goal, to change the way the world worships and he's making an impact towards that goal. Please welcome my good friend, messianic recording artist, Paul Wilburn. Thank you. The, now, did you pick up the cap in, in France or something? It's, it's a nice look. Actually, uh, a dear friend of ours, Gary Selman, who has just recently graduated, he's home with the Lord. Right, I know. A year ago, came to one of my concerts, and he brought a Panama hat, which I'm fond of. But fortunately, it was way too small. This thing was maybe 50 years old. He said, you'll look better. You'll look younger. You'll look smarter. And so I went and bought a hat. I know your story very well, but I, I some of the people watching may not. You, you're the, you are the son of a Jewish father, yep. very Jewish father. I remember your dad. What a great That's, guy. Yep. And a Baptist mother. What was, what was that like? A mixed marriage. <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty typical of our generation. Um, one of the concerns, of course, of the traditional Jewish community is, is the intermarriage and the loss of a lot of the Jewish kids to something else other than traditional Judaism. But on, in my case, um, we grew up and, and mom was a very proud Baptist. And so we bumped around from place church to church. We moved a lot. My dad was a traveling salesman. And when I got to college, um, as it turned out, my voice teacher was the cantor downtown Cleveland at, at no uncommon uh, synagogue called The Temple. As it turns out, yeah, but Marty Getz is from Cleveland, Marty too. Marty Getz what? was at Temple on the Heights right around the corner. Barry Siegel and I went to Temple together. Barry and Bacha Siegel. We're all buddies, by the way, and we went yeah. to China together with... Oh my goodness. Said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's another whole two shows. Yes, right there. it is. But in, incredible opportunities. And uh, and so I started attending the temple, sang in the choir, did that whole thing. Uh, I loved the uh, bagels, and, and that's what kept me there. And locks, yeah. Now, were you, was your mother a true Bible believer? And were you she raised, was. so were you raised as a true Bible believer? Uh, she tried. She tried. I, um, I did go to church occasionally after I left home, but it was usually because a pretty girl invited me. Yeah, it wasn't right. because I, I, I had a passion to. I get it. Find so there was it. no real relationship with God as a child, no. and then you wanted to be an opera singer mm -hmm. in in college. I remember. Yeah. Talk about that. As I um, as I furthered my education, um, rather than being a music teacher. I wanted to be um, an opera singer and a cantor. As it turns out, the, the guy that I was idolizing, Richard Tucker, um, was occasionally guested at the temple. Beautiful limestone, glassed-in Sunday school rooms. Yes, we had Sunday school because we were reformed. That's and, how temples work, yeah. Yeah, and then I became very reformed uh, to the chagrin of my uh, cantor teacher friend family. But um, yeah, that's so I moved to Europe uh, to study opera. I went to La Scala Opera House a couple times oh, a so week. So you really were taking this was a serious pursuit. Whatever I've done has been with all my heart, just like you. Yes, that's true. Whether it was sinning or whether it was uh, following uh, Yeshua. <laughs> we went full bore either yeah, way, you know. All the way. That's, and that's kind of a Jewish bit. trait. So your life changes. You something happens, or I think maybe more appropriate to say someone happened. Mm -hmm. I, I know the story well, but tell us there was a real turning point in your life. Yeah. 
Well, I was doing... Uh, and she was gorgeous. She was gorgeous. <laughs> this nice shiksa girl, she was gorgeous. You should have seen her. And, and I was doing my traditional thing, you know. Uh, I had a lot of young ladies who invited me to church. And it didn't frighten me. It didn't provoke me. But uh, what provoked me was maybe if I go with her, she'll go with me. And that usually was the case. So this young lady invited me to go to church. I went and sat down and I looked my watch. Okay, 55 minutes, start the timer. There's three numbers up on the wall. There's a book in front that corresponds to those. You sing all 28 verses, depending on what flavor of church it is. Hopefully it's one of the less passionate ones and you only have to sing the first and the last verses. Those were my favorite because you'd get out sooner. I went to church because it was good fishing. Anyway, so I was there fishing, and uh, this guy gets up with a guitar, and he starts to sing, and the atmosphere changed. Something, I turned to her, I said, are these people playing with the air conditioning here, or what's, what's going on? I figured it was a church, a Christian trick. You know, that they do so that to lower the lights and or whatever it is that they do. But all, I'm sitting there and the atmosphere around me is changing and it begins to feel like there's a weightiness in the room. And it so struck me. I remember leaving that service. I went home. Well, I went to the graduate dorm where I was living at Indiana University, now doing a master's degree and just stared at the wall wondering what had just happened to me. Um, it, it was a couple of months, don't have time to yeah, tell was, you the it, whole story. It was the presence of God. It was the presence. You, you didn't realize it. You didn't I'd know been anything. to church, I'd been to temple, I was in the choir, I was a nice Jewish boy. I had never experienced the manifest presence of God like that. And it absolutely captivated my attention and my imagination. As it turned out, you, you know the story, a couple of weeks later, now the guy that got up and sang was a guest. He was from Florida. This is Bloomington, Indiana. He left, never saw him again. And six weeks later, believe it or not, I don't have time for all the details, I was invited to have a free meal. Now, as a graduate student, free food. When you're putting yourself through school, that's a big deal. And I got a call, an invitation to go to a person's house to have a free meal on a Sunday night when the cafeteria is closed. I went and knocked on the door. Somebody I had never heard of, I didn't know who it was, knocked on the door. The guy opens the door. Who was it? The guy sitting on that stool in that church service six weeks earlier. When he sang, the whole place, the atmosphere, I almost fell out. I didn't even know about all this stuff back then. I, I literally gasped for what, it's you, you're the guy. He took me fishing a couple weeks later to Bumpus Mills, Tennessee, because he was a fisherman of men. I was a fisherman of girls. <laughs> and uh, and he, led me, he led me to the Lord on that fishing trip. The, the details stunned me every time I tell the story, it takes about 20 minutes to but tell you know, all the details. Almost every Jewish believer I know, myself included, have a very similar story. In my case, it wasn't a church, it was somebody's living room, but we were, we were changed by the very presence of God. Hey, we've got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the call back to the Jewish people, the, really the call back. And uh, when we come back, also a praise-filled performance by the one and only Paul Wilbur, also a fascinating tribe of Jews in Ethiopia who claim to be descendants of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. They may be one of the oldest surviving Jewish communities in the world. It's all just ahead on Jewish Force. Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming Messiah to the world, to the Jew first, and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by providing humanitarian aid to some of the poorest people in the world. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Barangwa, Zimbabwe. 
the Lemba. This faithful yet forgotten people have ties to the ancient people of Israel, the priestly tribe of Aaron, and have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years. We need your help to make this vital life-saving outreach possible. Will you be a blessing to these wonderful people and the thousands of others in desperate need? The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Call or click right now to help us save lives. And with your gift of any amount, we'll say thank you by sending you a new CD by internationally known singer and songwriter Paul Wilbur called Revive. This awe-inspiring album features some of Paul's most popular praise and worship songs, but with new takes on his classic hits. The songs highlight the coming of the Lord and what God has in store for you. Along with this incredible CD, we also want you to have this beautiful Aaron's Blessing keychain. It's a replica of the oldest known copy of biblical text, the Aaronic Blessing. It's perfect for carrying your house or car keys. And the words of the Aaronic Blessing, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, will be a constant reminder of God's love for you. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest people on earth, we'll send you all of the gifts just mentioned and Paul Wilbur's latest book, Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. In this dynamic resource, which highlights the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, Paul explains the many treasures of God's kingdom and how you, a citizen of his kingdom, can better understand his plans, his purposes, and the inheritance that he has for you. And we'll also send you a lovely sterling necklace with a star of David and the name of Yeshua written in Hebrew letters. It comes with a 20-inch chain and will be sure to inspire wonderful conversations about the Messiah. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this humanitarian aid and to help countless others around the globe, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the neediest people on earth. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call or click right now. He's sold over three million albums and he's been called the international ambassador of messianic worship. The incredible Paul Wilbur takes to the stage for a praise-filled performance and shares his amazing story just ahead on Jewish Voice. Back with my good friend Paul Wilbur. And Paul, congratulations, by the way. Brand new book, and it's beautiful. Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. And there's the handsome and talented Paul Wilbur <laughs> on, the, on the cover of that. Uh, I, I want you to talk about the book and a new CD that's come out, but I, God called you back to your own people. You never had much interest other than, than singing in the temple, but yeah. as far as Jewish identity, but he called you back to your people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> After I came to know the Lord personally and, and had a personal encounter with him, uh, I started writing music. The very second day I was born again, I wrote a song called, It is good to praise the Lord. I was hooked up with two Gentile guys uh, very talented and we formed a group called Harvest we were uh, on a record label I found myself singing in front of huge crowds um, Christian folk music we wrote all of our own stuff and every time I'd come up with a new song the other two guys Jerry and Ed would look at me like uh how do we do this? Lie, 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 lie. And they'd look at me like, you got a master's degree, write something we can sing. So I'd go back and I keep going back to the board and then the next song I wrote is Psalm 95. Come let us sing, sing hallelujah, hallelujah. And they're looking at me like at a cow at a new fence. And I'm like, we can't sing so this. So the Jewish stuff. stuff just poured out of you. I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't. I apologized. I tried to. Uh, so every time I picked up the scriptures, God would holler at me, you're Jewish, and this belongs in the Jewish community. And then I found Romans 1, 16, 17. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation, everyone who believes, and that's where most preachers stop, to the Jew first. And I could not get away from that. 
And that's what has captivated me for nearly four decades. It was a clear call right from the beginning. Couldn't I cry through the Psalms and the prophets? Well, two new, two new, um, two new tools really. A, a, a new a music CD revive songs of Lamb and Israel's hope. How about you that? You kind of went back to mm -hmm. the roots a little bit. Yeah. So two really great groups. One with yourself, and the mm -hmm. other with your. My buddy Joel your Chernoff. Your buddy Joel Chernoff. Our kids married each I other. Know. We're, I know. Uh, we're so very close. that, and then a really great book, Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Just give us a quick synopsis of the book, and then we'll have you sing. Well, you know, that I've found as I've traveled the globe for nearly four decades, there's still a lot of misunderstanding when we talk about messianic or one new man, or people are still asking the question they are why the feasts or why should we do this or why do you guys have to hold on to hebrew and it, so this book is really kind of a uh, a synopsis of decades of all of these answers um the kingdom of god the scriptures tell us jesus yeshua came preaching what the kingdom of God. He didn't come preaching a separate religion from the Judaism of the day. He was preaching a relationship with God. And so the whole book starts out with the kingdom. What is it? What is it not? Who are a part of the kingdom? Are there celebrations of the kingdom? And then the second half talks about the victories of the king. I see the calendar, I see the scriptures as a pattern of worship, work, prayer, and play that God has and rest, excuse me, that God has set up for us as kingdom people. And this is what the book is all about. I think it's really, really relevant for Christians that are watching. Really relevant. Why would you say it's so important for people that are watching to read this? It's, uh, I think it's a, a, of course, balanced is in the eye of the beholder, but it's such a balanced look at the scriptures, the kingdom of God, and why we would still want to follow the, the Messiah, the, the Yeshua. What about Passover? What about Easter? You know, the, one of the quotes I give in the book is, is Jesus the, the Passover lamb or is he the Easter ham? And uh, <laughs> We'll have to have you talk more about this tomorrow. Many people don't know that uh, Paul's not only a great worship leader, but he's a teacher also. Well, everyone's excited to hear you lead us in some worship, and you're going to do a song off your latest CD, Revive. Which one are we doing? One of your all-time old favorites, He Shall Reign. It really is. He Shall Reign. Paul, the floor is yours. All right. Jerusalem. And he 
shall gather the outcasts of Israel, the dispersed of Judah from all the earth. And he shall stand as an ensign for his people, and his resting place shall be glorious. And he shall reign over all the earth. 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 Come on and sing. He shall reign. Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming Messiah to the world, to the Jew first, and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by providing humanitarian aid to some of the poorest people in the world. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Barangwa, Zimbabwe, the Lemba, this faithful yet forgotten people have ties to the ancient people of Israel, the priestly tribe of Aaron, and have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years. We need your help to make this vital life-saving outreach possible. Will you be a blessing to these wonderful people and the thousands of others in desperate need? The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Call or click right now to help us save lives. And with your gift of any amount, we'll say thank you by sending you a new CD by internationally known singer and songwriter Paul Wilbur called Revive. This awe-inspiring album features some of Paul's most popular praise and worship songs, but with new takes on his classic hits. The songs highlight the coming of the Lord and what God has in store for you. Along with this incredible CD, we also want you to have this beautiful Aaron's Blessing keychain. It's a replica of the oldest known copy of biblical text, the Aaronic Blessing. It's perfect for carrying your house or car keys. And the words of the Aaronic Blessing, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, will be a constant reminder of God's love for you. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest people on earth, we'll send you all of the gifts just mentioned and Paul Wilbur's latest book, Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. In this dynamic resource, which highlights the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, Paul explains the many treasures of God's kingdom and how you, a citizen of his kingdom, can better understand his plans, his purposes, and the inheritance that he has for you. And we'll also send you a lovely sterling necklace with a star of David and the name of Yeshua written in Hebrew letters. It comes with a 20-inch chain and will be sure to inspire wonderful conversations about the Messiah. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this humanitarian aid and to help countless others around the globe, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the neediest people on earth. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call or click right now. An important part of what we do here at Jewish Voice is to provide medical care and clean water to Jewish communities and their neighbors in some of the poorest places on earth. Take a look at a clip from our medical outreach recently from Gondar, Ethiopia. Throughout history, they've been a persecuted people, enslaved, massacred, reviled, and driven from their lands. Indeed, the Jewish people have been scattered to the remotest parts of the earth. Even in a nation like Ethiopia, Jewish people have a history that may date over 3,000 years back to the time of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. 
The Beta Israel, or the House of Israel, is a Jewish community that has survived in Ethiopia for centuries, despite isolation, hardship, and persecution. Volunteer pediatricians from many nations travel to treat children just like these in Gondar. From providing the most basic pediatric care to treating children who are chronically ill and dying, Many are also lined up today, some for the first time ever, to receive free dental care. Volunteer dentists work tirelessly to help as many patients as they can on each trip. But the opportunity to provide such necessary and sometimes life-saving care is second only to the opportunity Jewish Voice has to transform lives spiritually by proclaiming the good news of salvation in Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. A Muslim lady, just by the love that I showed her, wanted to know the God that I served, purely by my love, that she was suffering so tremendously. And I held her in my arms, and I even cried with her. It was just the right time I said, God, thank you, because you let me know that what I'm doing is exactly what you want me to do. And just like Jonathan Bernard says, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Our outreaches, like the one that you just saw, make an impact on so many lives. And it's not just those who receive the aid, but also those who come with us to help. Now, there is a cost involved, but believe me, it will be worth every dollar. You will be changed forever. We'd love to share how you can be part of an upcoming outreach so contact us at 800-299-9374 or go to jewishvoice.tv. The Lemba, a lost tribe of Israel discovered in the remote regions of Zimbabwe. DNA proves that they are descendants of the priestly tribe of Aaron, practicing their Jewish faith for thousands of years, not knowing their long-awaited Messiah has come and will come again and the Jewish Voice Outreach Team has the privilege of sharing this amazing good news with them through our outreaches in Zimbabwe. It's amazing. Come witness this miracle. Be an important part of God at work in these last days, gathering His people back to Himself. We need volunteers urgently for this outreach, medical professionals, prayer partners, and practical service volunteers as we minister to thousands of very needy and spiritually hungry people in just one short week. Come with us and help these desperate Jewish people. Say yes to being God's hands and feet. Please answer the call. Thank you so much for watching today, and thank you to Paul Wilbur. He'll be with us all week, so be sure to join us again tomorrow to hear more. As I close out the program today, I want to remind you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, 6 says, May they who love you prosper. So if you want to prosper, pray for Israel. They really need our prayers now. Well, until next time, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you.